All right, everyone. Thanks for attending. I think we'll get started here in just a, a couple of seconds. I wanted to um, you know, introduce Jason here from Big Commerce. Uh, he's going to be kicking us off. You know, My name is Travis Mary. I'm the CEO of FlexPoint. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Uh, we, we're lucky to have Big Commerce and, and Jason here to kind of talk about their platform and really kind of the extensibility, the customization, the flexibility of it, and how that kind of pairs with our, our, the flexibility of FlexPoint as well. And really how we can kind of uh, help you guys scale up and you can learn a couple of things about how to compare big commerce to other platforms out there if you're making a decision um, and learn some things along the way. So with that, Jason, uh, I'll kick it over to you. And then uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and see if you're able to share maybe um, to start. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And I'll probably go off video here in just a moment. But to introduce myself briefly, I... Work on this GD partnerships team at Big Commerce. I've been here since September, but I've been a partner for about five years. So I've worked um, with agencies, I've worked directly with clients, and uh, I've worked with our partners. And very excited to share with you today and happy to answer questions along the way or uh, at the end. So I think we can get started. E commerce works out of the box, but won't box you. And that's our uh, tagline for Big Commerce uh, currently. We're, we're very excited about how flexible we are, and it really is the biggest differentiator that big commerce brings to the table in modern e-commerce. This is Travis and myself, and my email's up here if you have any questions during or after you'd like to send along. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Big Commerce, we are the world's most modern enterprise e-commerce platform founded in 2009 in Australia. Uh, we are now headquartered in Austin, Texas, and our growth has been uh, very consistent. Currently, um, Big C on the NASDAQ, we have about 68,000 total merchants, and 10,000 of those are using um, more advanced D2D functionality. And probably about the same slice there, about 10,000 are um, uh, on the enterprise side. We still have a, a very wide a breadth of clients that we serve from SMB to mid-market to enterprise. And we're capable really of helping all the way through uh, the journey of anyone who's working in um, e-commerce, whether you're just getting started or whether you're looking to really push uh, into you know, the more enterprise space. We're also one of the founding members of the Mock Alliance. Uh, which is an industry tech standard uh, for modern technology. Prerequisites are to be microservices based, API first, cloud native SaaS, and headless. So this is a commitment of ours and a lot of other organizations to continue to future-proof technology with uh, an architecture designed to scale uh, and also to be extremely partner-friendly. And this commitment to open commerce and our partner-centric approach is really core to everything that big commerce is about, whereas a lot of other e-commerce solutions on the market um, spread out into a lot of other spaces. We are absolutely committed to uh, what we do uh, with e-commerce with, uh, e and then to be able to scale with our partners, um, with our uh, absolutely top-notch top API sets to allow us to be able to work with other solutions and to really just continue to grow with our partnerships rather than eventually absorb into spaces where you know those partnerships uh, become obsolete. And to share some of our strategic priorities, um, we have uh, four major areas that we've been focusing on. And I have a video here and I'm going to try to play it. We'll see if it works.
I'll just back up in just a moment. Okay, and just for reference, and one of the first priorities that we've really focused on um, has been E2B. And this is one of the big differentiators with big commerce uh, in the modern era versus uh, a lot of our competitors in the SaaS space. Um, we reaches, recently purchased uh, Bundle B2B and B2B Ninja uh, in an effort to really expand our presence in, uh, in B2B space. Uh, and that includes a number of features Um, such as corporate account management, sales representative masquerade, um, invoice portal quoting, and, and some, some detail here. The, uh, the buyer portal uh, is a modern personalized experience uh, based, including customization options for buyers and automated administrative tasks that enhance satisfaction, loyalty, and conversions. The sales rep masquerade uh, streamlines B2B purchasing so that you can log in on behalf of your company, access shopping lists and products uh, to cart and place orders seamlessly. You have payment visibility control. Um, basically, it's control for B2B sales, manage, approve payment options, uh, purchasing orders, credit cards for a smooth purchasing experience, restricting access um, to your specifications. We have an invoice portal, uh, and that portal allows you to accelerate invoicing and payment processing. Uh, you can also set buyer roles and permissions, seller quoting and discounting, shared shopping lists. So, this is the, the most advanced SaaS-based B2B platform available, uh, easy to scale. And even if you're um, you know, on the SMB side looking to go into mid-market, this is a, an, an incredible option for you rather than having to go with far more complicated platform. Uh, we've also had a, a very significant interest in international. We're now um, we're global uh, and we're currently expanding APAC and MIA. So if you happen to have presence there, um, we are our, our expanse there. We can communicate with you and your teams um, across those markets. So looking at um, multi storefront, this is actually one of the newest innovations with big commerce. So it's designed for multi brand, multi segment, multi region. You can create multiple storefronts, single system. This allows you to scale smarter. Uh, by creating tailored experiences for your buyers while simplifying management. It allows you to effortlessly grow, reduce costs, empower efficiency, and make better decisions. Unified management here allows you to create multiple storefronts within a single store, create unique categories, and make products available on one or multiple storefronts. View and manage customers and customer groups within a single place. View and manage orders within a single place, and then view storefronts and analytics and generate reports within a single dashboard. Uh, this is one of the most recent innovations uh, with big commerce and the only SaaS based solution that offers this. Uh, it also allows you to have different uh, domains and, and security systems. Uh, you can apply and customize themes, widget scripts, and social links per storefront and uh, create differentiated pricing for a storefront via price lists and customer groups. And that was one of the biggest things that we were able to add where uh, other SaaS-based products do not have these, this available yet. And I think this one is for Travis. Yeah, perfect, thanks. So yeah, as, as Jason mentioned, you know the, the multi-storefront side of big commerce is definitely uh, an advantage that a lot of their, their merchants have joined the big commerce platform to take advantage of, you know, running multiple stores. And one of those customers that we share is Die Hard Fan Supply. Now, Die Hard Fan Supply is sort of an agency licensing model where they work with colleges and schools, uh, co you know, mostly colleges, um, but as well as like other kind of licensing, like Bass Pro Shops and um, I'm sorry, Bass Master uh, and different NASCAR entities, right? And so, 
you know, what we've done for them in the past, and as we brought them on a couple of years ago, and we still maintain them today, is kind of help bring on these multiple storefronts with sophisticated uh, distributed fulfillment. And what, you know, specifically for Die Hard, they're a print-on-demand company where, say, you know, Yukon is one of their customers, the Sugar Bowl, Ole Miss, right? Like these, these uh, stores are their own individual store. So, you know, Yukon fans can go get their gear after the Sugar Bowl is over when you go uh, buy, you know, the, the winning team's T-shirt or jerseys leading up, whatever it might be, you know, they have these multiple stores dedicated to those experiences or those schools. And so we connect to all of those. They've got about, I want to say, 30 to 40 different big commerce storefronts that we connect to, um, all individual, separate domain, um, separately managed storefronts. And when orders come in, we have one central kind of order management system that they can bring all those orders into one spot. And the big thing with them with the print on demand is we can bring in custom uh, custom field, like from the meta fields from big commerce, bring in the custom fields to say, okay, this, this was a jersey that was purchased, but it has a custom name on the back. It says Travis on the back instead of the, the player it typically has. And we're able to take that, uh, take it down from the order, put it on the purchase order that's actually being drop shipped from the, uh, the print on demand vendor, put it in the PDF, send it over EDI, whatever it might be and send it on over for that vendor to fulfill with the proper name on it to print, pack, and ship for them. So we'll do that across multiple different stores, uh, as well as uh, you know, one store might have multiple different items that might go to two different vendors. We'll look across those vendors, split them up, map them properly to send the, uh, the custom purchase orders to each one. So all that orchestration. You'll see at the bottom there too, they also have a warehouse management system, SKU Labs, and they have a shipping solution, ship station, We'll also look in, uh, across SKU Labs and say, well, is this inventory uh, located in their actual warehouse it, it, as identified in the warehouse management system, or is it going to a dro dropship vendor? Um, and we're going to pass those and split those up appropriately as well. And then we're going to be pulling uh, tracking back from ShipStation and, and providing tracking updates as well as um, you know passing that back to the big commerce store to notify the customer when it's been shipped. Uh, so all of that kind of orchestrated through the FlexPoint order management system. Um, and kind of load it up as well uh, from a product item setup perspective as well. And then lastly, down the middle, uh, you know, Die Hard is a, a fairly large company. Uh, they are on SAP for the ERP system, and we have our full open API, uh, which they their team is integrated to our open API, get, you know, 24-7 support, and then uh, nine to five support when it comes to API uh, modifications and, and questions. Um, the SAP integration is kind of built by them, but that full open API integration is supported by us. So something to kind of notice, and it really, when it comes down to flexibility, customization, you know, really kind of expanding your business, you can kind of see once you get to a certain point, it might make sense to, to kind of partner with FlexPoint and big commerce to really kind of get to these new fulfillment goals. All right, we'll go on to the next one. Another, another kind of customer that I think is worth sharing and a big commerce customer of ours that, you know, just to kind of point out how we can kind of help extend the uh, the platform is really when it comes to managing orders, big commerce has a ton of uh, automation and, and makes it intuitive and easy to kind of manage your orders. But, you know, when it comes to uh, shipping to multiple dropship suppliers across API or EDI integrations, routing it to, in this case, their other WMS or Doro, you can see Peter, who's been with us, you know, feels like since day one, um, can really become a lot more efficient. Uh, you know, going from two people to one person managing their big commerce orders, while at the same time period orders were doubling. Um, that's really where FlexPoint looks to come in. It helps to automate things where you typically might not be able to do it without a fulfillment integration solution like like we are today. And then lastly, on this next slide. I always like to real trees, interesting one, because, I, you know, I really do enjoy this concept and this movement of the brand marketplace, right? You think about real tree as a brand. They're not Bass Pro Shops. They're not Academy, right? The retailers you might know in this space, they are a brand, but we're seeing more and more of this concept of brands starting to bring on other brands onto their site. And, you know, they don't need to have the big, you know, the 200 uh, brick and mortar stores. They don't need to have kind of the retailer, um, team as much as, as as you might have in the past with this kind of D 2 C movement, we're seeing brands become retailers online to some extent. And with that, we've seen this concept of a brand marketplace and bringing on. You know, I saw them bring on Frog Togs and you know uh, the Hemlock Hats and different brands that are um, 
comparable uh, to them, but also that they have their prints. I think that's kind of the prerequisite. They have the real tree prints on some of their products. They go ahead and just connect directly with Frog Togs, Big Commerce Store, or you know, could be even Shopify, Magento, any of those other stores that they might be on. They're going to integrate directly to them to kind of work together to drop ship those orders. Realtree has no interest in bringing on, um, you know, uh, the Hemlock hats or the Realtree, or the, I'm sorry, the Frog Tog kind of rain gear in their own warehouse. They're just going to want to drop ship those items. So we help kind of integrate to those, you know, big commerce stores that their their partners might be on. Uh, integrate EDI. I think they've got about like like I say here over 15 plus suppliers that they drop ship from building a branded experience um, across their store with not only real tree items, but their partners items as well. So uh, once again, big commerce, we always see a lot of our customers go to them when they kind of need a more enterprise SaaS solution than you might, you might see in the market or something that's more flexible, has that multi-store front, has that kind of uh, customization and flexibility. But when you hit kind of fulfillment challenges, dropship, EDI, API integration challenges, that's when pairing the two together make a ton of sense. So wanted to share those couple of case studies just to kind of put the picture in place of you know how we work together. Fantastic, thanks Travis. Uh, another area that we wanted to touch on briefly here is omnichannel. And you know, with the, the change now of so many more um, storefronts and places and channels to sell, uh, in e-commerce era, um, Amazon, Facebook, Google, uh, TikTok, and Snap, uh, it's it's very challenging for a lot of organizations to be able to add on these channels uh, without a massive amount of work, knowledge, uh, and of course, the issues of how product feeds actually work. And the Feedonomics product is another one of the businesses that's under the big commerce banner uh, and really designed to both manage the spend that goes into driving this traffic, as well as how these items are displayed online. And so, and this is really when you look at how difficult it can be if you are trying to list products on six or seven different types of marketplaces, where each one of them has uh, a different protocol uh, for how the, uh, the text and the uh, pictures, everything has to come in. Um, Feedonomics, the product itself, normalizes that uh, across each one of these channels. So you really only need uh, one database of truth, and Feedonomics actually manages then how that um, all that information goes to your various channels. And that's actually managed by our team. And it does not require uh, really a lot of our partners and, and, uh, and users on Feedonomics never actually have to log into it at all. Uh, and so you have basically two major upsides here, manage that spend and then normalize all your data into those channels. And then when your orders come in, they're just filtered through your e-commerce platform. And for this product, that is platform agnostic, Shopify, Woo, BigCommerce, Salesforce, Adobe Magento, all of those are supported. Uh, of course, we prefer you to use BigCommerce. Uh, but this really allows you to reach much wider base with a very, very light lift of effort and cost in order to add it up. And uh, the, the in really was about 37, 17% uh, for the first uh, channel added, 37 for the second. And what we see is really you, you're lowering your costs by improving your ad spend and you're increasing your overall revenue by creating new channels. So looking a little bit at who we work with, you can see that we have a, a pretty broad group of clients uh, across a number of, uh, of verticals where big commerce is incredibly powerful in, uh, in apparel, electronics, automotive, uh, our, our B2B now is second to none and we're adding those customers more quickly and we have more growth in B2B space than anywhere. Um, they're very large retailers like uh, Reebok and Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, um, and Skull Candy, and we're we're continually adding you know larger enterprise clients as well. While we're still focused on uh, you know growing you know our new SMB and mid market partners and clients as well, we have incredible support, and we also have incredible uptime. Where there's we are we have had no scheduled downtime in years and we uh, have the fastest page load speed 
as well uh, across any modern e-commerce platform. And just looking at one of our clients here, Notori, um, having brought on big commerce, increased 141% in customers, 164% in orders, 163% in revenue um, after bringing on big commerce. So we've, we take very good care of our customers and our partners. So some insights into the ecosystem. If it may be obvious to some, but to others, when you have a more monolithic platform, something like the way that Adobe Magento is built or Woo, uh, you have a heavy lift on having to deal with hosting either internally or externally, uh, of having to constantly uh, do upgrades, security patches, things of that nature. Uh, whereas in, in a more um, modern solution, modular solution like BigCommerce, you have much less lift, much an easier solution to deploy, far more flexible far more APIs, easier to bring into an ecosystem of other applications, um, and really no rough edges when it comes to integrating with other uh, business models or other technologies because of our uh, partner, partner first model. And this is really the, the, the real upside of going with something that's a SaaS based product um, as Big commerce is versus going with an on-prem hosted solution. Absolutely lower total cost of ownership by far. Much easier for non-technical users. I have built two different big commerce websites and I am not technical in the least. And I would never be able to do that with Magento. That would not be possible. Much faster time to launch. Um, our pricing is extremely competitive, especially when you look at something versus, let's say, a Shopify, where Shopify is based on total revenue and we are based on total orders. So in any space where you start to get into more expensive items, such as anything like you know handbags, automotive parts, things that start to get into four, five, six hundred dollars, uh, we become extremely competitive on price, much lower than uh, when you're when you're basing that tier off of. Uh, pricing, we're just total orders. A flexibility for future proofing. We're constantly evolving our platform. That is not on our our customers. That is on us, and they never feel the downtime or the frustration or the cost of having to continually upgrade or security proof their platform. And um, the low maintenance itself, uh, e easy to scale. And of course, we always uh, for those who are looking for help can you know connect our our clients in an agency to help them grow if that's not an internal resource that they're looking to bring on. And um, we always, <laughs> would you like to talk about the difference between um, Big Commerce and Shopify? Because I, I think that the, the perception is that we are probably closer together than our other uh, competitors, which is, which is true from a certain point of view and that we're both SaaS-based e-commerce platforms. But a major difference uh, with big commerce is that our API limits are four to five times greater than that of Shopify. So it is much better to be in a, a really diverse ecosystem of applications when we do require high API limits, which is where we start to become a far better mid-market and enterprise solution. Uh, Shopify is really just not designed to scale that way. Um, we also can handle 600 variants on items where Shopify caps out at 100. And for certain types of apparel um, and automotive parts and other spaces where you have multiple variants, we are uh, the, the far better choice there. Um, we have far better SEO capabilities online, um, additional functionality without extra apps and integrations. If you're scaling a Shopify site, you're getting a lot more additional costs um, than what's out of the box of big commerce. Um, and of course, we are very flexible with payment gateways without transaction fees, where I'm sure uh, understand that Shopify really wants those payments. Uh, they also expand into places like point of sale and, and subscriptions, where we, we give a lot more flexibility of the, you know, the other tools that you can use in your ecosystem without us ever turning off um, you know, those features. And, uh, and additional features here, uh, Shopify doesn't support cart level discounts, we do. And you know that's not necessarily something that everyone needs, but for those who need it, it's, uh, it's a deal breaker if that's not a bad uh, Ability to create automatic discounts for customers by the specific customer groups, um, such as loyalty discounts. And this is really a, a, another feature of the, uh, the B2B uh, that, that we have that our competitors don't have in this space as well. Um, variance is another space where you know we we offer 
um, you know, 600 versus just 100. Uh, and uh, that's uh, it's huge for certain types of apparel, as I sort of mentioned before. Our SEO features, Shopify doesn't allow you to just customize your URL structure for products and categories. That is a, an, um, a major issue if you want to be really pushing to the top of the Google page. And we automatically resize images for the best combination size qualities and file formats. And that is not native functionality with Shopify. So that's really the high overview of big commerce. Normally, Devin Plopper would do these. She's our sales enablement guru. And I appreciate you uh, bearing with me on this. It's the first time I've done it, but I can answer questions or I can. Uh, Oh, I see some of those questions popped up here. Uh, I can share the presentation. I can share the deck if that's helpful. Yeah, I think we can probably help out with that. Um, yeah, I do see that first question. We will share this presentation. We'll actually share a recording uh, of this, Chris. Um, we'll send an email out. So as long as you've been registered, which you obviously are because you've attended, you will get an email with a recording. So look out for that next, probably this week, next couple of days. You're yeah. welcome. Absolutely. And Darren, um, the question here, I have a computer tech business specializing in building computers, pre-built and custom-built computers. Would Big Commerce allow me to build a similar website to New Egg or Micro Center? Uh, the answer there is absolutely. Uh, you know, the the type of enterprise features that you're going to look at with uh, something that's that broad, probably you want uh, uh, an agency to help with building something like that. But yes, Big Commerce can absolutely handle those types of uh, complex sites with both, uh, you, you know, you said pre-built, custom-built, you could even do, you know, consignment models with those if anyone is, you know, selling, you know, uh, you know third party. Uh, but yes, we absolutely support that. Yeah, and Darren, it's worth mentioning that uh, connecting with FlexPoint um, or our sister company, Inventory Source, if you're not familiar, inventorysource.com, uh, you can integrate directly in with, if you want to build a large catalog like Newegg, right? Uh, DNH, Synex, Ingram Myco, Tech Data, uh, all of those guys, you can kind of bring in their hundreds of thousands of products onto your store really in, in a matter of a couple button clicks um, once you have accounts with those with those uh, re, uh, distributors. And then on top of that, if you haven't heard of Eatalyze, right? Eatalyze is one of our partners that will bring in all of the custom product data like imagery, uh, specs, right? Like a laptop, you know, how much RAM does it have? What's the monitor size? things like that. So that's a big part with building out those marketplaces and getting all the data and getting it kind of seeded with product, um, getting it categorized. Um, so something worth mentioning there. And then, you know, pushing up to big commerce, we would push it all the way up to big commerce. And then big commerce has got a great category tree structure. It's got multi-level categories, unlike some other platforms that allows you to give you that kind of navigation uh, that you would expect with a large electronic site like those. So definitely worth checking out those multiple companies I just mentioned, uh, those distributors as well as Eatilize, E-T-I-L-I-Z-E, -I -I -E, um, FlexPoint and Inventory Source you integrate with all of them. Well, Eatilize just FlexPoint, but um, happy to answer more on that uh, if you guys want to follow up. Cool, uh, looks like one other. So are we able to send graphics to print on demand? So, yeah, sorry, are we able to send graphics to print on demand suppliers? Um, so that when you think about print on demand, right? We, we brought up the text example. Um, you know, that's typically a text box, right? We'll get it from a meta field. We'll bring it into big commerce or from, from, from big commerce. We'll bring it to flex point. We'll send out the purchase order. When it comes to graphics, if you're able to upload a graphic, if there's a plugin on big commerce, I believe is, is required here, then uh, that graphic would be transformed into a link. We can take a link down from big commerce and take that image link and then push it to your suppliers, which, you know, they click on that link, they get the graphic, right? So that's what we've done in the past. I believe Die Hard does leverage that uh, to send graphics to their suppliers. So that is that is how that works. Um, would I use, or can I load? Can I load products from dropship feed from a dropship feed to big commerce? So yeah, that's that's the big thing too. Um, then we talked about it just, just earlier, you know, an electronics example. If you're looking to bring in product uh, that into um, big commerce that you don't have access yet today, but your your dropship distributor will tell you, hey, I've got the product feed. It's got some product data. Maybe it's got a, a bunch of good product data. Maybe it has like some, but you might, might need to add more later, right? Whatever. Um, whatever the quality of the feed is, we will pull that feed 
into FlexPoint uh, via a CSV API. Sometimes we even build a custom integration for you. We have a pre-built uh, network of about 300 suppliers. So if you're in the auto parts space, you're in the electronic space, you're in furniture, um, uh, you know, there's a couple others out there. Um, you know, tools is a big one for us. You know, we have these pre-built integrations, you bring it into our system. And then from there, you can push up to big commerce, uh, parent child structure, meta fields, multiple images, um, modify the data through rules on the way up. So full product data management of dropship data feeds up to big commerce as well, if that uh, is of interest. Let's see anything else. I think that, let's see, we just had another one come in. Um, so I think this one might be better for you, Jason. Does BigCom Multi-Store have one cart system for customers to check out using different storefronts brands? Yes. So you can set that up basically however you want internally. You can have multiple brands go to the same cart. Most of the time, they do it as a slightly different experience. But you have the flexibility there to build that out as you want. So if it's more of a marketplace field that you're wanting to build, then uh, it multi storefront chances with that. Perfect. All right, guys. I don't see anything else coming in at the moment. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Jason. Appreciate uh, you joining today, man. It was it was great. I learned some stuff about big commerce that I didn't even know. So. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Hopefully everyone here that attended enjoyed it, learned something new today. Uh, as Jason mentioned, you have our information um, and uh, happy to always follow up. You know, we will have the recording being sent out to you, but happy to answer questions uh, anytime in the future. All right. Thanks so much, Travis. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Take care.